How you doing? Jordan Thompson here, uh, Stoke in Northern Ireland, midfielder. Um, just got asked to do a quick video message for yourselves, um, just to congratulate you on uh, your awards this year. Um, so I'll get into it, uh, just a short message, as I said before, just to congratulate uh, Bradley McGarrell, Ben Taylor, Carl Boyd, Ryan Foster and Daniel Hansen. Um, for gaining the, the Boys Brigade Highest Award, uh, the Queen's Badge. So well done on that there lads. Um, I heard you just put a lot, of, a lot of hard work and effort into it, so well done. Um, I'll just carry on with telling you a wee bit about myself. Um, when I was growing up in the BB, uh, we obviously played a lot of football tournaments when we were at the BB when we were younger. Um, looking back on it, it was some of, some of my earliest memories some of the best days was at the BBE playing football so um, I remember we, we actually won a Champions League it was like a mini Champions League uh, junior section um, cup and it was as I said before it was great obviously playing with your mates um, having a kick about with them and having a laugh but um, you obviously get that competitive side as well uh, when you're playing a tournament so no as I said just uh, a big congratulations from from myself uh, to the boys, so um, stuck in. All the best.
I'm Paul Boyd, I'm Sheldon Payne, and I'm a level 1 trainee light vehicle technician at NRC Newton Abbey. I gained my Queen's badge on the 18th of March. Over the last few months, I have been doing a lot of fishing and I've been out doing a lot of walking to keep myself active. In the future, I hope to be a light vehicle technician and progress on to being an autosport. My favourite moments from doing my Queen's badge would be helping out with the junior section on Friday night and progressing on to being a leader and winning the best garden at Clonmore House Nursing Home. My favourite BB moment was when we went to London for Remembrance Sunday and I had the privilege of being interviewed by the BBC on the World News about World War I and receiving my President's Badge and my Queen's Badge Award. Tell me a wee bit about yourself. My name is Daniel Hansen. I'm 18 years old. I live at home with my mum and dad, my pet dog named Frisk. I'm a third year at Belfast Met and I'm doing independence for life and work. When did you get your Queen's Badge? I got my Queen's Badge on the 18th of March. And what have you been doing over the past few months? I haven't done much due to the pandemic. Just playing my Xbox, walking my dog, shopping and trying to stay healthy. Right. What do you want to do in the future? I would like to work at Smith's Toys Shop. Right. What are your favourite moments from doing your Queen's Badge? My favourite moments from doing my Queen's Badge was helping out on a Friday night with the younger boys and helping to teach them new things. I enjoyed coastaling and the residential. And what are your favourite BB moments from your BB career to date? My favourite BB moments are winning the fishing competition, receiving my captain's award and coins badge, and just by joining the BB it has taught me how lucky I am to have Jesus in my life. Thank you. Tell me a bit about yourself. My name is Brandon McGar. I am 17 years old. I attend Belfast Met where I am currently studying motor vehicle where I am in my second year. What have you been doing this last few months? The past few months I have been gaining more hands-on experience with cars, helping family out around inside and outside the house with DIY. What do you hope to be doing in the future? I hope to be a fully qualified car mechanic and to ha also have my driving license. Your favourite moment from doing your Queen's Badge? One of my favourite moments from doing my Queen's Badge was getting recognised for achieving best kept garden at Clonmore House where I where we became first. What do you enjoy doing for your skill? I enjoy converting my pedal bike to a petrol bike. Your favourite moment from your BB career to date? My favourite moment from BB was representing 16th Week in Abbey on the 100th anniversary at London and Remembrance Day as well as playing for the Belfast Battalion football team and also participating in all sporting activities.
I'm joined now by Catherine Davis, who's Head of Remembrance at the Royal British Legion, and Carl Boyd, who's from the 16th Newton Abbey, is that right? So I, I'm going to start with you, Catherine, first of all, because I just want to pick up on this point. A lot of people you hear say, 100 years, perhaps this is the moment, we, we've done the commemorations for the First World War, there, there are other conflicts that we should move on. I mean, what, what do you say to that? Well, so we've, we have always, and um, with the March Pass and with Remembrance, been acknowledging the service and sacrifice of all of the armed forces from conflicts from 1914 up to, to modern day. And the gratitude that we have for the freedoms that we have in our world today. So we, we, we very much believe that there's a great future for, um, for remembrance and for taking that moment and all coming together as a nation, young and old. And as we've seen today, just extraordinary turnout here in London and across the country from across the generations and people just coming together to take that moment, I think at the end of the centenary, to really acknowledge that sacrifice of that whole generation, the men, the women, the children, and those from across the Commonwealth, which has been extraordinary over these last four years, and, and especially sort of over the last few months as we've, we've really marked the end of that centenary. And, and Carl, everybody here has, has their own thoughts, their own memories. You, I know, you, you've got a great-grandfather who served yes, the First World War. So why, why was it, what was going through your mind today? It's walking down, just walking down the street there with everybody. It's it does bring it back on why we're actually standing here today. It's if they hadn't have made them sac sacrifices that they had made, we wouldn't be here. Your great grandfather William. Yes. And I mean, in the last few years, have you perhaps got more interested in in what he went through, what he did? As I got older, yes, it started as my teenage years. It would I started to pick up an interest in it. And I've researched a lot behind all his history and the medals, etc., what he would have won. And you've been out to France, you've been yes. to the battlefields. And what was that like? It was, it was really her reason. It's, you're walking up to the start of a graveyard and you look how many names are what bodies that are actually there. It is unbelievable. Now, one of the things, if you, if you go to that, that part of France, other parts of Europe, is the number of coachloads of, of youngsters your age and younger, who all with bits of paper and names, that there does seem to be a renewed interest in what happened a hundred years ago. It's, from what I was saying, it seems to be a lot of young people that are starting to take an interest now, but more that would be the likes of relatives, older people and the families. And you think that the, this sort of cer ceremony, what, what we've seen today, this should continue? 100 percent, yes. And th that's the point, isn't it? That if a young generation says, we want to remember, we will. Absolutely. And as we say, you know, we, we are in ongoing conflict. Our armed forces are still serving and sacrificing for the freedoms that we have in our world today. So, you know, it's still acknowledging that ultimate sacrifice that they make, which is, is very important. And we acknowledge all of those sacrifices here today. Do you think we've done them justice today on, on the 100th anniversary? I, f I feel like we have. I feel like it has been an extraordinarily poignant and respectful moment, to, not just today, but also last night at the Festival of Remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall, where we really acknowledged all of those, that service and sacrifice. and. All that they did for us, the groundbreaking of social change, you know, universal suffrage came from that generation. We've talked about the sort of timeless works of art from J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It's, it's all in our world and in sort of every way that we live today, the, the pioneering innovations of that generation. So things that we may take for granted today, like the blood bank and um, triage and prosthetics and plastic surgery, all have their origins in the innovations that came out of the First World War. So, so much today we have to thank that generation for, which is extraordinary. Very quick final word from you. I mean, how, how do you feel now, having spent the morning, the day here? Really privileged and honoured just to be here and being able to do this. Carl, Catherine both, thank you very much for joining thank us here you. on BBC News.